Oh, I'm jiggling all around here. We got some horse manure from a friend in town. The horse manure is jiggling too, I can see. The can horse see manure it? is jiggling? Oh, look at it. I can't see it. Let me look. Is there jiggling horse manure in the back of our truck? It, oh, it won't let me zoom. It won't let me zoom in on my iPhone from this way. So if you try to do that, you won't be able to do that. Um, Derek didn't really want me to buy soil. I might take him out to my garden area and have him try to put a shovel in the ground and see what he thinks about the soil, but he doesn't really know about gardening and soil. I guess he thinks that maybe that was a, a judgy statement to make, given his reaction. Do you know about gardening soil? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I've got a bunch of horse manure and that's gonna give it a lot of fluff which is very good. And I think I'm just gonna be basically turning in, turning my soil just completely, building new soil on top of the soil that I have because it is so cakey. I don't even know how they grew corn on it. And, I, and Derek was saying that maybe, okay, you talk about how maybe, maybe it's some of the clay. I don't know what you mean. Like maybe. you said that maybe it was some of the clay that they oh, that they, they found to they build our foundation. To expose the clay that was about 18 inches below the top of the surface to build the pad. So that's probably mixed into some of it. But I think where you're at in the garden area, I don't think that's the case. I think it was all pretty Disturbed. So that's what that's the soil that I have to work with. Probably. And I don't if I don't remember what the soil map looks like if there's a lot of variation through there because it could change pretty abruptly in certain areas. I'd say that's probably some of the worst stuff, I think, right there. Further east it's a little better. Well, so we're gonna transform that. So you think the trailer is dead? I don't see how it couldn't be. I could try it, I guess. Do we want it right here? Just oh, because, yeah. where's the, okay, but where's the, where does the driveway stop? Like you've, Nowhere. do you have it marked out? It's not gonna take much for me to push it, but yeah, yeah. I probably for her Well, that probably is a good spot because if the manure stays here and then if a truck backs up and then dumps mulch here, I can have my mulch pile and my manure pile. Where in one pile as possible or do you want me to spread it out no I don't want you to spread it out I want it in a pile because I'm gonna very be very specific with my pile that happened for the gutters so the gutters run into a trench and it would be fun to catch the water but we can probably make something of a catch down here to then use some kind of pump or trash pump maybe 
to even bring the water back up and into my garden. We'd have to use electricity, electricity, but at least it would be free rain water. That would be wonderful to use on my garden. Okay, to tell you guys about this little tiered greenhouse. I think it's pretty wonderful. I mean, it is a sturdy little structure for the amount of money I paid for it. And it rolls around super easily. And I could even roll it to the garage and open the garage or then it'll be easy to roll it out into full sun to get full sun. But yeah, it's going really well. These are Shasta daisies, dill. Those are lupine, that's parsley. And I can just rotate the whole building unit. so that it, the sunlight reaches the other side. So I have no affiliation with that company, but you saw in my last video that I got it for only $44. So that's a pretty good deal. So right here, the front door, and right here is where, where I wanna put those two horse paintings. That'll be lovely. No, oh boy, I get, excited about horse poop. Do you? I think I'm gonna need more. More. I think I'm gonna need more. So guys, I hop into my truck and the first thing on Google News that I notice, and of course it caters to our preferences and what we look up and stuff, but is plant fungus infects human and first reported case of its kind. If you're new to my channel, you know that I am obsessed with mold toxicity and believe it's the major root cause to all of the diseases, but it co-infects with so many other things. Mold is a chronic and slow grower colonizer in our bodies and it just snowballs. It, re it wreaks havoc in our bodies. It isn't is easily identifiable to our immune system as easily as, as uh, virus and bacteria are. And it just coordinates with other viruses and bacteria and it uh, depopulates your gut microbiome plethora of things keeps you immunosuppressed and continues to grow. Okay, so I wanted to share with you because uh, pollution, fungus thrives in pollution. And right now, I believe that we are the most susceptible. We are walking substrates for mold. We have been depleted of our microbiome. Most people do not have a, a good amount of a microbiome because I believe that, that most of us are, are have a, infect, inf not an infection, but a silent infection of mold in our body that we are fighting. My, my whole family, mold, we had uh, mold toxicity. We have, I will say we have mold toxicity that we're still repairing from, and I believe that most people do and need help. Iodine and boron and the fat-soluble vitamins are what I promote the most of, and, um, and then a healthy diet, uh, and then the other things can line, line up, I feel like, once you get a handle on those things. And I want to just show you and explore this article really quickly. Um, actually, we might not go so quickly, but all right. So plant fungus, plant fungus infects, and I'm going to be try to be more humble about this, but I want us to think broadly. That is including myself. Okay, let's, let's go on. Plant fungus infects human and first reported case of its kind. Silver leaf disease is the curse for a variety of bot botanicals, from pears to roses to rhododendron. Infecting their leaves and branches, the fungus chondrosterium purpureum 
uh, can be fatal for the plants if not treated quickly. Aside from the risk of losing the occasional rose bush, and the fungal disease has never been considered a problem for humans until now. In what, in what researchers suggest is the first reported case of its kind, a 61-year-old Indian mycologist, mycologist is a mold toxin uh, scientist, mold scientist basically, appears to have contracted a rather serious case of silver leaf disease in his own throat, providing a rare example of a pathogen seemingly making an enormous leap across entire kingdoms in the tree of life. Or maybe it wasn't so uncommon in the immunosuppressed. I believe we're all immunosuppressed, except for this later on we'll see that he isn't. And he he isn't. I believe we're all basically immunosuppressed because of our toxic pollution and blah, blah, blah. A recent published case, case study describes a male patient in India, eastern, India's eastern region, presenting to a medical center with a cough, a hoarse voice, fatigue, and difficulty swallowing. A CT, a CT x-ray scan of his neck revealed a pus-filled abscess next to his trachea. Lab tests failed to find any bacteria of concern, but a special staining technique for fungi revealed the pres presence of long-rooted filaments called hypha. I bet he had advocated for himself because I bet that they didn't, they weren't even going to think about trying to find if it was like a fungus. I don't know that. I can be optimistic, but I bet they would have treated it with all sorts of kinds of antibiotics way before they would try to identify. Okay, I should think more optimistically. Fungal diseases aren't exactly uncommon in humans, though, uh, though of the millions of known Species, only a few hundred, are capable of causing us much harm. I'd like to say that maybe more can cause us harm than we think. Ringworm, athlete's foot, and thrush commonly make themselves at home in damp areas of our skin, much to our irritation. Sometimes, especially in people with compromised immune systems, fungi that commonly feed on rotting vegetation, such as species of Aspergillus, can infect deeper parts of our body. This particular infection didn't look much like any of those, however, prompting the medical specialist to seek advice from the World Health Organization Fungi Reference and Research Center, who identified the unlikely suspect from its DNA. Though... Though a mycologist himself, the patient couldn't recall having worked with this particular species recently. His field work had brought him into contact with decaying material and other plant fungi, potentially explaining the source of his infection. For pathogens of any variety to nestle the inside of a host and start replicating, they need the right tools. Not only do they need a means of securing the right nutrients, they need a few tricks to cope with what is essentially a hostile environment bent on tearing them apart with all kinds of chemical weapons and killer agents that we ourselves can create and kill them with. That makes it extremely rare for a fungus adapted to threading its hypha through leaves and stems to find success in doing the same inside our flesh. The fact the patient in this stu case study appeared to have a fully functioning immune system with no indication of being on immunosuppressant drugs or having HIV, diabetes, or any kind of chronic illness makes it even more perplexing, if not a touch concerning, I'd say. Cross-kingdom human pathogens and their potential plant reservoirs have important implications for the emergence of infectious diseases. The authors of the study write in their report, while bacteria species of superbugs and novel viruses emerging from animal populations regularly get our attention, we rarely give much thought to plant disease in our midst. Though extremely rare, the fact it clearly could happen makes it an area that deserves attention. Fungi especially pose a significant risk. Similarities in fungal and animal biochemistry make the design of suitable vaccines and therapies that can prevent or manage infection a real challenge because they look their cells can look like our cells. It's harder for our immune system to say, you're not mine. Fortunately, in this case, regular drainage of the ulcer with two months on a common antifungal agent did the trick. 
After two years of checkups, the patient was still fine with no signs of a repeat infection. It's unlikely we'll ever know why such a chance infection took root in the first place, and it remains unknown if we'll see it. It's like again. This research was published in Medical Mycology Case Reports. Okay. All right, guys. Can I be in it? No. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I make YouTube videos. You have more stuff. So. <laughs> out, out, out. Go. Okay, all done. Perfect. Go. I'm trying to help. All right. Okay, shut the door. Shut the door. Okay. Thank you. <sighs> okay. So there's a couple things that I want to say. Um, we see it often with COVID that there is a co-infection afterwards, even long COVID. And you can identify that there might be a fungus um, colony that is taking root. Or rather, uh, if you test yourself for, with a mycotoxin test, I bet those long COVID patients would find that they are dealing with some mycotoxin burden, which could indicate either a problem in their home that they need to remediate, or it could be a problem in their body, which I believe we're all having a problem in our body that it, their home just kind of like makes it worse. But um, iodine and boron and fatty vitamins, they are really great at helping you detoxify and kill mold in your body and restore your health. So uh, I'd love for you guys to investigate that. Anyhow, I thought that also uh, really exemplifying that I, I bet that mycologist really advocated for himself. And if there is a concern that you have, I would really implore you to, to, to dig deep, ask, say, can we test this for a fungus? And I do not suggest antifungals and I am not a doctor, so don't take my word for it. I don't suggest antifungals because, as I'm going to put up on the screen, there is uh, plenty of evidence that uh, antifungals, they, they aren't given very frequently. Well, because we think we, they don't, that we don't battle with those very much. But they are not healthy for you. They hurt you. They harm you. They they are trying to fungus kill fungus. So a lot of them are fungus mycotoxins themselves, or they are chemically structured like a mycotoxin itself. So I highly do not think that it would be helpful to try to kill it with an antifungal. You have to use discretion, of course. I'm not, uh, I would have to use discretion if I was in a pinch or something, if I was just like panicking or something. But education is key. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that. And I'll leave this video at that.